We have been discussing tax representation techniques since past few videos, especially word embeddings. And what we covered in word embedding so far is word to vec and glow. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of another very popular word embedding technique called fast text. Now, fast text is very similar to word to vec with one difference. So if you don't know word to vec already, I think you should go and watch my video on word to vec and just kind of get an understanding on the entire technique. In that video, what we covered was two ways of creating word embeddings. One was continuous bag of words, SIBO. The other one was skip graph. So in continuous bag of words, what you have is a context. And from the context, you try to figure out the target word. So let's say your context is order his, and you try to figure out the word king. And in that process, you are training a neural network and you take the weights of that neural network which you can use it as a word embedding for the word king similarly in the skip gram it's a reverse technique actually in in, in here you have a target word from that you're trying to predict the context and by doing that you are once again getting word embeddings which is these weights w6 w7 8 and 9 and so on I know this could be confusing to you. That's why I said you have to watch word to vec video. I will provide a link in the video description as well. But in YouTube, just say code basics word to vec. So assuming you have a clear understanding of word to vec, let me tell you what is the difference. Word to vec is based on word basically. That neural network that we train, the smallest unit there is word. Okay. So, for example, here, see Ahsoka, Emperor, he's, these are all words on which we train the neural network. Whereas in fast text, we train the neural network on character and gram. So, if you have a word such as capable, and let's say n is a hyperparameter, so you can choose n to be 2, 3, 5, 6. I think 3 to 6 are popular choices. n equal to 3 means the character n-grams for word capable will be CAP. So you first take three character, then you take next three characters, which is A, P, A, next three characters, P, A, B, and so on. I have shown few. Uh, you will also take the entire word as well in that set. But you get an idea. You are breaking apart word and you are using the character n-gram to train your model, which means once again, when you have this model here, if you're capable, instead of capable the whole word, you will say CAP, APA, you will pass those individual character and grams. And what's the benefit of doing this? See, you are capturing fine level, more granular information. So what happens is in word to vec let's say your vocabulary doesn't have a word capability. It will mark that as a out of vocabulary but in fast text out of vocabulary problem is tackled to a major extent because when the model encounters word capability it has already seen the fractions of that word which is cap apa pab maybe some other word in in your dictionary will have you know ability things like that because of that Fast text do not have the problem of OOV, which is out of vocabulary. Out of vocabulary is a standard problem that we have covered in the previous video. Fast text is trying to solve this problem to a major extent. And some other fun facts about fast text is number one, we already saw it can handle OOV better than word to vec. It is often a first choice when you want to train a custom embeddings for your domain i remember when i was at bloomberg we had a problem where we wanted to train a model on pharma companies bloomberg gets a lot of financial documents so when you are dealing with companies like pfizer and you know other pharma companies you get drug specific information so you get financial details on let's say drug tylenol okay 
or omniprazole and you have revenues and epas and you know dps all of this broken down at a drug level and when we wanted to train that model when we want to do to solve a specific nlp problem with that when we used standard models such as bert or vertuvec which is trained on wikipedia it did not work because you know you have a lot of pharma specific terms in that and using generic wikipedia model usually doesn't work and you have to train your own custom model and whenever you have to train your own custom model for your domain the first choice as of 2022 right now is always fast text because fast text is lightweight it it is fast basically you have to spend less resources on it and you can get a solid baseline in your first attempt so that let's say if you want to do something special in your pre processing or let's say your data collection itself is not right you can tackle all those issues you know rather than using bert in a first shot and just wasting huge amount of gpu resources and getting a huge electricity bill you know for training those models the first approach is always right now as of 2022 whenever you want to train your own custom word embedding for your own domain the approach is always use fast text okay remember this as a guideline whenever you are working on any nlp problem once again you want to create your own custom word embedding for your own domain you go with fast text it gives you a pretty solid baseline that you can build on top of it and later on if you want to use bert or any other fancy model you can do it but don't start with bert straight away and fast text is a technique as well as a library okay so it's a technique such as word to vec but it's a library as well and when i say library i mean this so this is an official website of fast text so fast text.cc is the url and it is a library created by facebook um, research group basically it is from facebook and the it is a technique as well as well as a library so here you will get lot of pre trained models you will also get uh, a module python module okay for fast text and underneath it is obviously using this character and gram approach all right so that was a quick overview of fast text uh, let's do some coding right now so i i'm going to show you in the coding section i'm going to show you how to uh use the pre train models first and then we are going to train our own custom model on indian food recipes data set let us first install fast text you can do that by running pip install fast text command in your windows command prompt or git bash i always use git bash because it allows me to run the unix command and when you run it it will install i have already installed it so it's not going to do anything and then go to fasttext.cc website and let's download some pre-trained models okay so if you go to multilingual word vectors i have models for so many different languages see so many different languages and i already clicked on english bin so when you do english bin it's going to download the model it is 4 gigabyte so it's going to take a long long time i'm just going to cancel it cuz i have already downloaded that model okay it is gz file 4 gigabyte folks you need to have patience uh if you don't have enough bandwidth or space don't worry you can just watch this part okay uh, for the next next part this model is not needed i also downloaded hindi model so hindi again click on bin okay there are two models bin and text you want to download bin model that is again 4 gigabyte and what i did is i kept that model now in the you know let me go here so i have uh, this particular folder called downloads and in that i kept the model so the model was dot bin dot gz that was the extension but using git bash i unzip the file see so i've cd into that directory first 
uh, cd into this directory okay and then i run command gunzip g unzip on that and when you run that command you get this particular file so initially the file was like this see let me show you initially the file was dot gz i went into this directory cd that directory c cd that directory and i just said gunzip that and when you run that it will replace gz file with dot bin file now this is around 6.7 gb so it's a huge model it requires a lot of space but let's, let's assume you have uh, taken care of unzi unzipping that you can simply import fast text okay and then you can load that model just call load model file with whatever is your path and if you're on windows you need to provide two slashes okay so it will it will take some time to kind of download that model and once the model is downloaded you can directly access the word vectors so this particular down model that i downloaded is trained using fast text technique okay and it is trained on common crawl and wikipedia data set so all the text on wikipedia and all the text on this other website called common crawl which is another data set so that model understands the general english language pretty well as it has seen all the wikipedia and common crawl text so now you can call different methods okay so if you want to know what methods are available i usually in python i just say dir this and you will find methods such as get nearest neighbors we have looked at our gensim tutorial first initially and you know that what that nearest neighbor method would do so let's say i want to find all the words which are near to the word good okay uh so let's see what does it give see bad great decent nice now once again i want to clarify you might think okay good and bad are antonyms but when you say get nearest neighbor you're not referring to synonyms or antonyms here okay don't go into those linguistic details all you're doing is when we were you know building the model using wikipedia text the term good and bad appeared in a similar context the movie was good or he was a nice man he did so many things or he was a bad man he did xyz thing so good and bad appear in a similar context that's why here also in the nearest neighbors method uh, you will get bad okay so good and bad have almost 75% similarity then good and great has 74% similarity so you don't understand whenever you are looking at a uh, word embeddings and when you say okay word embeddings are similar you have to really understand what we mean by that you can try different other words too let's say car for example see cars vehicle whatever okay potato anyways you can just explore you can get an individual word vector by just saying get word vector so get word vector and the word vector for good is this it is 300 dimension vector and when you do shape see 300 okay you can also use this other method called get analogies so get analogies and we looked at uh, this thing previously right so let's say what is the relationship between berlin and germany so it will first try to find that relation and then based on that it will predict what will be the the prediction for india okay so let me just run it you probably have a guess right you get delhi because delhi is india's capital germany is berlin's capital so you see how powerful this model is it can 
it can identify a relationship between these two terms. So whatever is Berlin to Germany, same relationship is there between Delhi and India. And you can try a few other amazing things as well, such as car is used for driving. So then phone is used for what? Any guess? Yeah, texting, phone calling, see? So it works. Similarly, let's say, okay, book. Okay, now tell me. Okay, pause this video, okay? This is a quiz for you. What will be the output when I say book? Well, book is used for reading. So how car is used for driving, book is used for reading. Okay, now I want to uh, try a few more words. I love Indian food and Indian food. I love the chutney, you know, the pudina chutney and the sweet chutney. So I want to know the nearest neighbors of term chutney. Now chutney would have appeared in Wikipedia and common crawl uh, data set multiple times. It's a famous term. But the nearest terms that it encountered was chutneys, achar, raita, and so on. I mean, it looks good, but it clearly shows that this model en was not trained on let's say indian food recipes data set if i had trained this model on indian food recipes data set this would have looked much better similarly you can try other things uh, halwa for example that's another indian sweet delicacy and it is telling me all of this but you know i feel like it can do better if it was train on Indian food recipes data set okay so let me just put chutney here <laughs> interesting let me just put some chutney here to make it more spicy and then uh, there is another term called saragwa now this is from the region where I am from in India it's called Gujarat and the drumsticks are called saragwa now this is a very unique term and most likely English Wikipedia text will not have this term so you see it's giving some garbage result here but I want my model to be such that it gives me some meaningful result. So for that reason I'm going to now use Indian food recipes data set and train this model. But before I do that uh, I want to show you few results from the Hindi model. So I similarly downloaded Hindi model as well. Okay see cc.hi .hi is Hindi. And when I explore some terms such as this term means good. Okay. And the way I get this text is I use Google Translate. So you say Google Translate English to Hindi and I want the Hindi term for good. So then I control C and control V here. And when I did that, see, I got Bura. Bura is bad, right? So it is similar to this result, good and bad that you got here. Remember good and bad? So it is getting the similar result here. And then other term I tried was cow. So this is cow. And what we it got was bans. This is buffalo. And uh, you know plural of uh, cow and so on. So Hindi model also works really well. So if you want to explore again this entire notebook is available in the video des description below so you can explore it. But now let's um, train a model on Indian uh, food recipes data set. So let me open that file. So my file of Indian food recipes I downloaded from this particular Kegel data set. Okay, Indian food recipes. I will link this in our notebook. And what this da uh, database has is this. So let me just, you know, download it. So I downloaded it. And this is the CSV. This is how it looks. And the CSV has a couple of things. So recipe name, it has the ingredients and it has the entire recipe. See? So it will have the entire recipe. To prepare, let's say, masala karela dish, this is the recipe that you are going to use. So we'll use this data set here so let me uh, import pandas spd 
and all right uh, so let me just close some extra tabs i like closing extra tabs because it helps me focus and i'm going to now uh you know load that csv and we have looked at this code before so i'm not gonna type everything from scratch and this is how my data frame looks like okay pretty straightforward now the text that i'm interested in is that recipe because i want to train uh a model which can understand Indian recipes better and you all know that whenever you are using continuous bag of word or skip gram it is an unsupervised approach so it will look at scan through bunch of text it will create training sample on its own okay based on context and target word and then it will train the model again if you're not getting uh, this you have to go and watch my word to vec and if you look at uh, this uh, df dot let's say translated instructions okay so if you look at this translated instructions i'm just looking at the one sample this is the whole recipe what i find is a lot of slash and characters okay and uh, there could be some other punctuation etc so what i want to do is i want to do some text clearing before i train my fast text model i want to remove all the white spaces all the special characters that it may, it may have from this text and how do i do that well you can use reg regular expression okay so for regular expression i'm going to import re and let's say this is my text all right this is my text all right now to remove all the punctuation etc what can you do so i will just go to regex 101 i mean that's a website i always use whenever i'm writing regular expression i use this website and here it says that slash s is any white space character and any word character so you want to uh see you want to remove anything that is not a word or not a white space character and the way you do, you can do that is by using this okay we have had regex, regex tutorial before so i think you should probably get an idea so let's say this is some text that you have okay and you have you know some punctuation some characters things like that uh, so if you do something like this means not this means negate so negate any word character or any slash s character this is how you can locate all the spatial characters any character that is not that is not alphanumeric see spatial symbols percentage dollar dot it will detect all of that using this regular expression okay and you want to substitute that with space and the way you do that in python is by doing re dot sub so in re dot sub first you will specify your regular expression okay so this is my regular expression let's say r means raw and then you are you are substituting that with space and in the flags i will do re dot multi line because you know i have multiple lines and when i do that uh, re dot sub okay i need to specify text see it it removed spatial character so i had spatial characters let's say let's say dot dot was a punctuation then i had a comma you notice dot comma everything is gone it still has slash n so i can write one more expression and remove the slash n okay remove the slash n and remove the extra spaces as well so if you have let's say extra spaces see you will notice that see here i got extra spaces let me see 
this is my extra space so how do I re remove my extra space so this is my text okay to remove the extra space here I will write my regular expression and the second one is what I want to substitute with so I want to substitute extra spaces with one space okay so the purpose is to remove any extra spaces that you have and the expression for that would be uh, okay space plus so whenever you have space plus which means one or more occurrences of continuous spaces whenever you get one or more occurrences of continuous spaces replace that with a single space so see now I get single space single space single space and I also want to remove slash n, for example. So you want to remove any space and plus and you want to remove slash n. So you can specify both the character here. First character is space, second character is slash n and any repetition of those characters, I replace it with space. So what I will do is, now I will write a preprocess function that will do all this pre-processing so this is pre-processing number one two i can also have let's say capital later i want to just you know make it smaller so you can just say lower and it will make it smaller so i will do all three post-processing okay and i will also do strip so st so this will uh, remove leading and lagging uh, spaces from the text so now when you have pre-process text for example this is the text see it reduced this text into smaller case first of all see 2 m all these are now smaller slash n is gone dot is gone all of those things are gone so my text looks much better and i can uh, apply this function on the entire column so see, this is my pandas data frame, which has all the recipes, right? And I can just use map. So when you do map, it will process all the entries in that column. And my DF looks something like this. Uh, um, I will just print individual elements so that you get an idea. See? My Karela recipe is clean. All right. Now, the way fast text works is you need to have a specific format file whenever you want to train the model. So, what we will do now is uh, let's see. So, we have got translated instruction. Oh, yes, I forgot. So, actually this is all we need we need just the raw text this is unsupervised training okay continuous bag of word and skip grams are unsupervised uh, form of training so all you need is you need to say df.csv i want to export this data data frame to let's say food recipes.txt and here I want to ex export only one column which is this translated recipes I don't care about any other columns okay also I don't want any header header as in you know the column header I'm talking about like all these header they're not useful I also don't want an index like one two three zero I don't want that so columns is equal to this and when you do this and when you open this this file see it will look something like this basically from that csv original csv that we had now we got one single file and every line is one recipe every line is one recipe there is no new line character nothing it's a very raw plain text and this is this will be very useful in training our model so training our model is actually very very simple all you do is 
you have already imported fast text right so fast text module has a method called train unsupervised and when you supply this particular method it will just train the model so now it is what it is doing really is if you if you shift tab and look at the documentation it is going through all the text in that file which file this file and it is using unsupervised learning approach so we we looked at two approaches right cbo and scriptgram by default it is using scriptgram so it would have taken let's say any pair of word and see for this text salad is a target word tofu and with is a context word so it would have created those training pairs and then it trained the model and after training the model it got the word vectors so now uh, my word vector is oh, I forgot to do this so my word vector will be ready in this model and once it is ready I can now get the nearest neighbors for chutney so remember what nearest neighbors we got for the chutney so let me get the nearest neighbors for the chutney so what I do is I use snipping tools and using snipping tool I just take a picture of this whole thing okay and I'll just put it on the side and now I will say model dot get nearest neighbors for chutney see now compare that with the original model that we got this model was from wikipedia wikipedia say chutneys chutneys toku chutney achar raita etc now here it is saying chutneys dhania khaju chutney imli chutney pudina chutney <laughs> if you like indian food you know these are more closer terms so now this model that we trained has a better understanding of indian recipes whereas the previous model which was wikipedia test it did not know much same way halwa so let me try halwa so halwa another great indian sweet delicacy so my um wikipedia model was saying kheer barfi halwa which was still okay but here see, it says khoya shira barfi badam rabri kesari these are all gajar you know gajar halwa is very popular i love that so you, you you're probably getting an idea right it's just getting a better understanding of the overall thing you can also uh, try the word where wikipedia model performed horribly saragwa for example here see all garbage but when you use this particular model at least meaningful result you know shark saragwa uh, is a drumstick and we make curry out of it curry is called shark so see similar word funsi is a, another vegetable which looks like drumstick so I mean, it doesn't look exactly like drumstick, but they are all vegetables. So at least this is giving better result, whereas the default Wikipedia model thoroughly fail on it. Okay, so you can try whatever. Okay, which recipe do you like the most? Okay, dosa maybe. See dosa. These are similar, right? Uttapam is similar to dosa. Dosa, pesar to neer. These are all the similar words same thing with moong you might be feeling hungry <laughs> so moong people make dal out of moong sprouts dalma see so it is able to identify the similar uh, words uh, in that now i think that that's all i had a uh, check video description for the exercises always uh, because i add exercises later it's so much work so i don't get time sometimes uh, but I want to specify one last resource which is if you go to fast text and if you go to tutorials okay and if you go to word representations the mo you can click here by the way python right so we just train unsupervised but there are other parameters to uh, unsupervised such as cbo by default you are using skip ground but let's say you want to train fast text using cbo you can just supply that as an argument you can also do 
हाइपर पैरामीटर ट्यूनिंग लेसे यू वॉन्ट टू चेंज योर डायमेंशन डायमेंशन ऑफ योर मॉडल फॉर एग्जाम्पल हियर द डायमेंशन ओके वॉट इज द डायमेंशन ऑफ दिस मॉडल सो लेट से वेन यू से गेट वर्ड वैक्टर और वर्ड वैक्टर ऑफ डोसा दैट वर्ड वैक्टर शेप इज हंड्रेड बट लेसे यू वॉन्ट टू चेंज इट टू थ्री हंड्रेड you can do that when you are calling train unsupervised method you can also change epoch by default the epochs are 5 learning rate you can change threads whenever you are training model on your custom data set if it is not performing well make sure you are um you know you are you are trying different different type of hyper parameters all right i hope you like this video in the next video we will explore fast text further i will most likely cover text classification using fast text or i i i need to think what will be the next tutorial but we are not done with fast text uh, i have more videos coming up